So this morning I came down to Dash Point State Park. That's down on Federal Way. Uh, I found it on Google Maps, Google Earth. You can see it's got this long pier running out, and I kind of missed the sunrise. I got here a little late. Uh, but right now I'm doing a long exposure. Uh, oops, I think I just kind of went over a little bit, but uh, as you can see, it's, just, it's more of an ex uh, scouting trip to see what this place is like. I don't know if I'd catch the sunrise or sunset or whatever from here. It looks like you can actually catch both. So that's pretty cool. So you can get look this direction, catch the sunrise, or you can go on the other side of the pier and look west and catch the sunset. So maybe come down here a little more. Unfortunately, my light's fading really fast, so it's just kind of turning into a boring day, but there's still some decent light, so I put my two-stop uh, graduated hard filter on to really darken up the sky, uh, then I've got my six-stop neutral density filter on. It gives me a shutter speed of about 25 seconds, so I don't know, looks pretty good for what we've got. Uh, so I'll take a few more, maybe I'll switch to the other side of the pier and see how it goes from over there. So now I've got the camera right down on the water there. Uh, so you can see this is basically what I'm looking at there from this angle. Uh, it's giving me a different view. So I think it's hopefully turned out pretty good, but you know, my color is pretty much gone. I just got here too late. But, you know, that's part of landscape photography. Uh, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but either way, you're just out here having fun. So you notice I have the <clears throat> the towel over my camera. What happens when you do long exposure is light can get into your viewfinder and ruin your photo. So you just cover it with anything. Uh, your I know Canon, no, I'm not sure about Nikon or Sony, but there's actually a little cover on your strap, your camera strap. So if you take off the viewfinder eyepiece you just slide that over the viewfinder then it blocks all the light but my bag's up over there and that's where my strap is so I'm just covering it with this little rag here so 80 seconds was just a little too short uh, the exposure turned out pretty dark so I'm doing it again uh, I changed it uh, to one eighth of a second uh, and then just kind of brighten up my exposure so we'll see. I'm going to go for about two minutes this time, see how that goes. Uh, according to the least the Lee app, it's supposed to be about two minutes, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, hopefully it'll turn out better this time. If not, yeah, I can always change it in post, bring up the shadows, uh, change, it, change the exposure, so we'll see how it goes and hopefully it'll turn out better. Okay, so I got home, got all the photos uploaded to, to Lightroom. Uh, we'll kind of scroll through. You can see the first one, you know, while the sun was still rising. Uh, one thing, so I put my polarizer on, and you have to be really careful with the polarizer. You can see like this blue circle right here. That was caused by the polarizer. Uh, you can see each one of these has it. And that same circle up until this one when I took it off. So, you know, that's something you have to play with with your polarizer. If it works great, put it on. If it's not working all that well, you know, just remove it and deal with it in post. Uh, the one thing about these photos I wasn't really paying attention to was this mountain range back here. That is a little bit distracting. I should have dropped the tripod down and put the dock right on that mountain range so you wouldn't be able to see it. But, you know, it's a learning process, so. And then you got these ones where I went down onto the beach instead of up onto the grassy area. Uh, so I really, really like this one for the long exposure. I'm gonna make this one kind of really 
pop, I guess. Uh, so I think we'll start with one of these. Uh, let's start with this one because it doesn't have the polarizer circle on it. So to get started, first thing I want to do is bring up my shadows, bring down my highlights. And if you hit the Alter Option key and you click on your white, uh, you can see it goes black. But as you slide the slider, as those pixels start to show up, they're burnt. So you want to keep it right before it's, they show up. So right about there is good. If you have a little bit of burn, that right there doesn't matter. Uh, as you can see already, just by doing those couple things, it makes a huge difference. And the same thing with your black point. Uh, if you hit the Alter Option key, hold it down. Uh, I usually go a little bit farther with the blacks because uh, it doesn't really matter because of where they are. So it's just kind of in these dark shadowy areas. And from there, I think we'll bring up a little bit of vibrance. You can see, you know, with anything like this, just play with it. You kind of a good rule of thumb is go all the way up and then back it down to where you can't see the difference. You know, so about plus seven or so. Uh, I'm going to bring up the clarity a little bit. Clarity is kind of, it can really ruin or in, improve a photo. Uh, so I usually just go just a little bit, like plus seven. Uh, from there, you know, the, I think the saturation and hue is pretty good. Don't want to do too much because everything's already so pink. Uh, we can change the white balance. So if you kind of click through, see how it changes out and goes a little more pink, go to cloudy. More yellow shade, even more yellow tungsten. These ones are usually kind of weird tungsten fluorescent and flash. Uh, see, most times I usually go with shade, I usually keep that on my camera, but I think this time it's a little too much. Uh, so I think daylight, daylight is pretty good, so I think we'll stick with that. Uh, but then you can also just kind of change it yourself too, just by adding a little bit of yellow. Just add a little bit more magenta. Just kind of let the pinks really pop on this one. Okay, from there, scroll down. Now, with sharpening, uh, you can see if you zoom in, let's go another one. See how it's all grainy here? Uh, and if you sharpen it, it gets even worse. So what you want to do is hold down your Alt or Option key and you click on the masking portion, masking tab, and you just drag it. And everything that's white gets sharpened, everything that's black does not. So then when we zoom back out, you can see if I hit the Alt or Option key and click on it. See, it's mostly just the edges that get sharpened, which is really what you want. And then from there, you can see when we go to Noise Reduction, Drag it up just about 44 or so. You can see all that graininess just goes away. Uh, but you know you don't want to do too much, otherwise your photo can get blurry. So you gotta watch that. I don't know what that is. I think it's a bird or something. We can get rid of that in a little bit. Uh, then, and then your chromatic aberration and your profile corrections. If we zoom in, you can see this green and pink, green and red lines on the edge. So that's what chromatic aberration is. So if you click that, you can see they go away. So always make sure you do that. And your profile correction, that's for your lens. Uh, you can see how it changes the vignetting on it. Kind of flattens it out a little more. And from there, it is a little bit crooked. So let's go to the crop tool. If you come off to the side and you click your left mouse button, you can see all those lines show up. So you just want to Rotate it. I'm rotating it to where the horizon here was even with one of those lines. So I think that's about good there. I'm done with that. Okay, what else do you want to do? Uh, I usually also uh, throw in a little bit of vignetting. Kind of brings kind of brings your eye more into the center of the photo. Then we can also if I want to add a. Uh, graduated neutral density filter. You can just kind of drag that down a little bit. And then you can see the exposure is way up, but if we slide this down, just kind of darken the sky just a little bit. Uh, one thing that's important to realize when you do this is that your reflection cannot be brighter than your sky. 
that goes against physics. So yeah, you have to be careful of that. And uh, then we can also add a little bit more magenta to the sky. A little bit of blue. I think that looks pretty good. You know, again, this is your photo. Do what you want with it. Uh, as long as you like it. I'm going to call that good. I think we're going to bring up the exposure on the pier a little bit. As you can see, I'll put that just under one. And we can just brush. Brush it in a little bit. And down through here. And we'll do this little concrete pier as well. Or what used to be a pier. So then we can, if you want to see, just click one of these little buttons on and off. See how it changes. That's without. And that's with. We can call that done. Oh, let's see. I think we can... What else we want to do? I think that's probably about it. Uh, you know, you don't want to do too much. Of course, you can do whatever you want. So, But I try and keep it fairly simple. Uh, for something like this, kind of keep it as natural as possible. Okay, so now let's get rid of all those little dots. So if you click on the spot removal tool, and you can see that if you you can change the size of it up here, you can go to size, or on my Mac, I can just drag my finger up and down my mouse and it changes the size of it. Uh, add a little bit of feathering. So it's not too hard of an edge. Okay, and then there, so if you, if you can zoom in, then I usually kind of start up in the corner just kind of look. Another way you can do this is if you come down here to visualize spots and you click on that, now it goes black and white, and you can see any real spots. So I can find that that one bird or some whatever it was. Because uh, usually when you have a spot, they really show up in here. So let's get rid of that, and I'll go directly to that with that bird or whatever it is let's see there it is right there so we let this focus again now if we click the visualize spots you can see it's this spot here that spot right there this one here uh, but if you don't like that you know just leave it unclicked make this much smaller you just come up here, just click on that, and I'll just pick a spot fairly close to it to copy it to. Then we can change that one, do that one, that one there. Some of these may just be spots on my lens too, so I thought I cleaned it off, but apparently not well enough. And then just kind of scroll around looking for any other spots or imperfections in the photo that you want to try and get rid of. Uh, you only notice it was long exposures. There's another one. If you have any movements, if you have like a bird or something, then they moved. Then there, there's a button. There's like a ghosting effect that you can get rid of as well. Just kind of erase the whole thing. So from there, I think that's probably about good for the spot removal. I'm just gonna look a little bit more in the water. Yeah, all right, I think that's about good. And click done. And then zoom back out. I think that's about good for this one. Let's see about bringing before I shut it down, it's about bringing a little bit more vignetting in, just to kind of bring close in the photo, more like that. And if we do that, should we bump up the exposure just a touch? Okay. Yeah, just a little bit. I like that better. All right. So I think we'll call that one done. You can see, it's just very simple. Only took like five minutes. Had it done. Maybe a little more than five minutes, but that's all right. Okay, now let's move on to this one here, the long exposure. And this one, it's boring. There's The light was pretty much faded and gone. 
Um, so let's bring it back, bring back some pop. Okay, so what we wanna do, kind of the same thing, bring up the shadows, bring down the highlights, we'll bring up the white point. Also with the white point, if you look up here, see you just have these little arrows up here? So if you drag your white up, as soon as it hits the side, you can see how it turns blue, that little arrow. That's also right at the point where if you hit your alter option key, you get the burned out effect. So you can also do your white point by focusing on that as well. Keep it just out of there. And I'll drag down the black point. Like I said, blacks are a little bit different. Now you can drag those down. Now something like this, I really like to boost the clarity. Just kind of really make it punchy. Just kind of bring that up. Let's bring up the, some vibrance as well. Uh, okay, maybe bring down a little bit of saturation. From here, let's go, let's do the typical remove chromatic aberration, profile correction. Let's crop it and make sure it's square. Well, that's actually pretty level. Okay, enter button. Okay, now we'll bring in a graduated neutral density filter. Uh, yeah, bring that in like so. I'm gonna do bring your contrast down, just kind of really make it dark. Also, kind of change, give it a little bit more magenta over the blue. Like I said, we're really trying to just bring out this photo because it was fairly boring. A little bit of contrast. That one's looking pretty good. Okay, let's add another one. Bring it down from the top. Again, kind of just up higher. Same thing. Kind of bring the exposure down. A little bit more magenta. A little bit of blue. And let's also bring one up from the bottom. But keep it way down. So just, just kind of in the bottom section. Uh, same thing, a little bit darker, a little bit of magenta, a little bit of blue. Okay, close those ones out. Now I think we'll add a circular filter, kind of same. Actually, this one will be a little bit different. We'll bring the highlights to the exposure up. Kind of just kind of make it right here in the center. Something kind of like that. Uh, add a little bit of contrast. So let's see. Well, if you double click on these sliders, they'll go back to zero. So anytime you're not liking it, just double click, it goes back to zero. Okay, something like that. Let's go ahead and add another one. Let's bring this one down here. Kind of rotate it a little bit, kind of fit with the, the scene. Kind of bring this down a little bit. I think we'll add another one, kind of over in this area. Something kind of like that. Add a little bit of magenta to this one. Ooh, maybe not. I think that kind of gets a little too out of control. So just put those back to zero. Uh, let's see from here. Let's see, do I want to do anything else? Let me just make this a little bit bigger. And that looks pretty good. Call that done. Okay, then just overall, let's change the, yeah, a little bit of magenta, a little bit of blue, that's eh, a little too much. So yeah, you really have to be careful with this, with the white balance temperature and tint, because it can really make your photo go a little too far one way or the other. Okay, should we bump up the exposure just a little bit? Oh, that looks pretty good. Okay, and then let's go down. Actually, let's see about adding more. More vibrance, a little bit, another decrease in saturation. Okay, now let's go to sharpening. Again, you can see, 
you know, and all we're trying to do is sharpen the edges once it focuses. And you can see the bird's out of focus because uh, it moved and it was a two minute exposure. You can see up here 120 seconds. So we'll just bring up the sharpening a little bit, hit the masking, bring that up. So we're just masking or sharpening just the corners and the edges. And that's about good. And then we'll do the noise reduction. I'm going to bring down my sharpening just a little bit so I can add a little bit more noise reduction. Kind of a, one of the rules of thumb is your sharpening value and your noise reduction value shouldn't be over 100, you know, if you add them together. But, you know, that's all personal preference. So, okay, that's looking pretty good. A little more punch, a little more pop to it. Uh, you know, I think I'm going to bring out some of that magenta. Uh, so, it's, so I clicked on the brush. I'll just bring up the magenta just a little bit. Uh, let's change the size of it. Kind of a fairly bigger brush flow density because you don't want too much. Just kind of these these areas a little bit. Just kind of bring out a little bit of magenta in the clouds there. I'll do a little bit down here, just kind of fit with the sky. I think that looks, that looks better. Let's turn it off. See, it just adds just a little bit. I think that looks much better. And from there, let's scroll down to the vignetting. Kind of really bring it in, add some punch to the corners. All right, I think that looks pretty good. So now let's zoom in and then we'll do the spot removal. You can see the bird's out of focus because he moved. It was, like I said, two minute exposure. So if you just kind of, let's make this a little bit bigger. And you just click on it and just drag it across. I'm trying to get too much of the dock in there so that the the railing stays nice and square. Okay, now we drag this around. I know there, I saw a couple other spots in the sky, like some dust on my lens or something that I try and get rid of. But not really seeing them now. Could have been from all the filters I added. Could have canceled them out so that they don't show up as much. So you just kind of keep looking for any sort of blemish or dust speck or something that was on your lens or, oh, there's one. So right there, so let's make this a little bigger. Get rid of that one. Okay, so that's looking quite a bit better. Let's let this focus out a little bit. Or not, for some reason Lightroom is just taking its own sweet time today, doing whatever it wants to do. So I think we'll call that good for the spot removal. Let's zoom back out. Now you can see in just a short bit of time with only Lightroom, went from this to that. And I really like this. You know, it just adds punch to, the, to a boring photo. So I think that, we'll just call that one good. Now, so we did that one, we had this one. And this one wasn't as boring to start. So it's that to that. So you can see it's, you know, well worth doing. You know, spending a little bit of time in Lightroom and Photoshop. Uh, Photoshop's a little more complicated. Lightroom's pretty easy to deal with. So that's why I do most of my editing in Lightroom. Uh, you can see here, there's still a couple birds here, but they didn't seem to move. So, and they're far enough in the photo that you don't even really notice if they are a little bit blurry so I think it's that one we'll call that one good and another thing with all these settings we just did you can actually save all these as a preset so if you come up to uh, actually let's see come into presets click the plus button and everything you did I can title this uh, 
Let's see, what, what should we title it? Uh, dramatic doc, something simple, and create. So now what will happen is, now let's go to this one. Okay, kind of same photo. There's a weird thing here though. I couldn't quite figure out what it was. All I have to do is just hit the dramatic doc. Everything's done. So we can, you know, everything we did here, we can save as a preset as well. You know, so if we go up, if we scroll up to presets, hit that, we can go uh, sunrise dock, create that one, and then let's go to say this one. All right, it's loading, hit the sunrise dock, done. You know, so presets make it really simple. Obviously, like I said, you have to go right and go and change a few things, like gotta, you know, straighten it out a little bit. Uh, get rid of your little spots and things like that. But, you know, again, it's just a starting point. But to me, I think that looks pretty good. You know, maybe try and get rid of all this dark blue up here. So I think I'll call that good for today. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, check out the website, randybotphotography.com has all my contact information on it. Uh, if you like the video, feel free to like it, subscribe to my channel. Uh, other than that, if you have any questions, send me a comment.